Hello, I am Reddy Bhupati. Once again, welcome back to the second session on Aruba CX switch integration uh, with SimpliVity. To demonstrate the Aruba CX and uh, um, SimpliVity, I have taken a, a two node setup. Um, basically, there's nothing in the disaster recovery. So there is just two SimpliVity nodes connected with two Aruba CX node switches here. And as you can see, uh, the ILO interface connected towards the management and then there is a ESXi management one gig NIC cards are connected here. And the two 10 gig NIC cards are connected to Aruba CX for uh, federation and uh, also storage. Even the user data traffic passes through, you know, one of these 10 gig interfaces. There are three type of networks um, required. One is management network for managing the infrastructure and providing for VM networking and federation network which handles the heartbeat communication between OmniCube, the SimpliVity OmniCube systems as well as the VM replication and backup traffic and the storage network which provides VM access to SimpliVity data stores. Right? And um, in the SimpliVity, there are multiple elements involved. One of the major elements are the base image, which is SimpliVity image, OmniCube image, which basically runs on the server. And the other one is SimpliVity Federation, which basically uh, SimpliVity OmniCube is deployed together into a global environment uh, consisting of multiple um, you know, vCenter data centers, uh, you can have minimum two OmniCubes in one federation of one single data center. Uh, you can have either two plus zero kind of setups or two plus one or four plus one, four plus two. So it all depends on the number of systems that you want to add to the federation. Number of depends on the requirement and scale you need. You can you know, add more nodes into the federation. And then there is one interface NIC card on the server, which basically helps with the deduplication that is called OmniStack Accelerator Card. And then there is one arbiter, it's a software runs on a, a Windows machine outside the Federation. It helps to facilitate communication between all the SimpliVity OmniStack nodes inside the cluster, uh, properly to arbitrate uh, quorum decisions between the nodes and then the SimpliVity extension uh, which is installed on the vCenter that allows to manage the entire SimpliVity Federation and its inventory centrally from the vCenter. Uh, for you know, quick demonstration, we have uh, taken a screenshots of all these steps. I'm going to walk through those screenshots quickly. So the first step is um, download the SimpliVity software and then you can find a deployment um, installer uh, for a USB image. So using this USB image, I have inserted into the DL380 SimpliVity servers and then boot with that USB image, you will see deploy and factory reset option. So I choose an option here to deploy for the first time. And then after the installation, you will see the system shown as waiting to be discovered. Okay, so the SimpliVity OmniCube software is installed on the server, but it is waiting to be programmed. Okay, so I'll hold on to this topic here and then go to the next one. I will come back and reassign IP address to be discovered um, so that it can be discovered from the de deployment manager later. So here I'm showing an Arbiter installation on a Windows machine, which is outside the cluster. So it's a very simple next, 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 finish. That's it. So make note of the IP address of which where you installed the Arbiter. You are going to provide that IP details in the deployment manager. So now I'm installing the vCenter server here. After the vCenter server installation, I have created a SimpliVity data center and then I have created a data center cluster inside the SimpliVity data center. Similarly, I have created a SimpliVity DR then I've created a DR as a cluster. But in this topology, I'm showing only two plus 
zero as in no nodes at the DR, only two nodes at the DC. So once the vCenter installed, I am installing the MIB file or VIB file into the vCenter using the SimpliVity plugin. So first you download the plugin into vCenter using a CP, then I'm running that file. Then it's going to ask you a series of questions, accept the license, terms and conditions, blah, blah, and then you're done. So installation is completed. After that, the vSphere UI is going to restart its service. You don't need to restart the whole vCenter. It automatically restarts the vSphere UI, and then you will be able to log into the vSphere as in vCenter. So once you log into the vCenter, you will be able to see the Federation, um, SimpliVity Federation, uh, you can see it in the vCenter. And then going to the next step, uh, once the vCenter is ready, now I am reprogramming an IP address on this system where we installed at step one, so that this can be discovered from the deployment manager. So once I select the network card, enter the IP address manually here, then apply, then you can see the IP address 10.10.8.21 waiting to be discovered. Now I'm going to install a deployment manager. Again, you can run this on one of the Windows machine once you run next, next. Okay, so before I launch the deployment manager, I want to show you what configurations were there on the CX devices. Other than the management, the pre-configuration, um, other than the management VLAN, VLAN 8, there's nothing else provisioned on the CX switches. Like what ports it is connected to the Federation, what ports it's connected to you know, storage, all that interfaces, I did not configure anything. Also, I did not provision the VLANs for Federation on storage. Okay, just to show you that there is nothing other than the management VLAN here. Also, I'm showing you the port that I'm using for management, uh, VLAN trunk are load all, native VLAN 8. This is the management interface that I'm using for ILO as well as using for the ESXi management interface. So I used only these two interfaces, 9 and 10, 9 and 10, and both of them provisioned with VLAN 8. And the interface 1 slash 1 slash 1 used for federation, which I did not show here because we are not doing any pre-configuration, that interface is automatically configured after the deployment manager is complete. So here I'm launching the deployment manager that we just installed, connecting to my vCenter with its credentials. And then it's going to show you the whole inventory in the vCenter. So I want to install these ESXi servers on the SVT SimpliVity data center in the data center cluster. Then it is asking, do you want to create a new federation or you would like to join to an existing federation? So this is a new federation that I'm installing. And it is also asking arbiter information where I installed the arbiter. Uh, my IP address was 10, 10, 8, 10. And then in the previous versions of the SimpliVity, you used to see basic. But in the current version, which is 3.7.9, um, HP Aruba switch, uh, basically it helps you to integrate with Aruba CX switches. So you select the CX switch, and then you are going to enter the details manually. Here I am providing the IPs of the CX switches and the credentials to log into the CX switches. So as soon as you click next, the deployment manager trying to connect using API into the CX switches. So accept it and then it shows you that it is able to discover both those OmniCube, SimpliVity, um, base image, whatever the system that you installed in the step one, both those servers are discovered the DL380 is, right? And now you choose what ESXi version you are planning to install, click next. It's going to now request ask you which interface on this server is used for management, which interface used for federation and storage. So I have selected the respective interfaces. So automatically using LLDP, it can discover what is the neighbor interfaces connected on the CX side switch 
and that interfaces are going to be provisioned with respect to VLANs. So now it's asking the Omni Cube uh, SimpliVity uh, credentials. You can enter those credentials and then it's asking for management IP that we are using for the Omni controller as well as the ESXi. This is the network range that I'm using and the MTU. And this is the IPs that I'm planning to use on ESXi. And this is the OmniCube virtual controller IPs that I'm planning to use for the management. And in the storage side, this is the storage and the VLAN number that I'm using. This is the storage, same even for OVC um, controller. Similarly for federation, sorry, storage, this is for federation. I'm using VLAN 22 and the IP address of the storage that I'm going to use on ESXi. And then it's asking VLAN uh, DNS information, DNS server information, then NTP information. And then it shows you all the summary, review it. And then next, <coughs> in here, it's going to show you um, to start a test. So before it really goes and deploys onto the systems, you can run a quick simulation test using all the information that you have populated earlier. It runs a simulation test across all the nodes and then it gives you a result you know, one by one. If there is any problem, it shows you that particular you know, information is not able to reach. You know, if there is any caution, it shows up cautions. Like here, virtual controller not able to connect with the SimpliVity node on 443. So some of the information you can you know, still take it uh, and proceed. Some of them, if it is completely failed, you know, you cannot even see the next button highlighted. So because the tests are paused, now I am pressing next. Now you can see it shows up, okay, all the data that you populated, you would like to save it to an XML file? I said, yes. And also I'm saying start deployment. So the advantage of this file is in case for whatever reason, if the deployment failed at this stage, you can reload this image, uh, this file with a one click so that you don't need to re-enter all this data manually. So next time you can just use this file to update it if something specific that you want to update. Finish, then the deployment started, right? You can see the deployment going on now and it's done, success, okay? So that's how the deployment is completed. Now you see what happens on the CX side. 21 and 22 VLANs are provisioned automatically by the deployment manager and also port 111 provisioned with storage and federation VLANs. And also because federation and storage needs higher MTU, the MTU 9000 also auto provisioned by the deployment manager. Okay, so once the deployment is complete, now you can log into vCenter server. The first thing is what we do, we create a backup policies like gold, bronze, silver, depends on your criticality of the applications. You may choose gold versus silver versus bronze, right? So in the gold, what I'm doing is I am re, uh, you know, taking a backup every one hour and I'm going to retain the backups in this example, I'm just showing it for one day, but I may want to retain this for one month. Whereas in the silver, I want to back up every 12 hours. Maybe I want to retain the, you know, the backups for seven days. But in here, I'm just taking one day. Um, if it is a bronze, maybe I want to take one time per day a backup. I may want to retain the backups only maybe for, you know, two or three days. So these are the various policies you can create and apply those policies to the VMs so that the VMs are going to be backed up based on the backup policy. So to back up these VMs, I am creating a SimpliVity data store, which is going to span across the cluster members. So here I'm creating a SVT DS as my data store. And by default, if you don't apply any backup policy to a VM, it is going to take based on the bronze backup policy, whatever the rules you set, based on that it's going to back up. So this is the data store that I created. 
and here i am showing an example for one of my ubuntu vm i am applying a backup policy so right click on this and then you see set backup policy and i am going to choose a gold backup policy so that every one hour this vm is going to backed up because that's a critical backup so what is the benefits again as richard spoke earlier so because the deduplication and compression benefits without simplicity you may need 90 gig data store on the hard disk as you can see only two vms which are 2 gig each so total vms are 4 gig but i have a last 46 hours or 48 hours i am running backups that's why i have about 86 gigs of backups data writing into the disk without simplicity this is the disk space needed but because i have a simplicity deduplication and compression helped me to write the same data onto the disk as 938 mb not even 1 gig so the net net benefit is about 90 gig storage um, we managed to save because of the simplicity yep i am handing over back to richard thank you so much All right, thanks Reddy. So, yes, as you can see, the Simplicity plus Aruba integration is designed to simplify and automate the deployment of Simplicity nodes when they're plugged into those specific Aruba switches. Uh some of those values as Reddy was saying would have to be manually entered and they'd have to be manually configured those VLANs on the switches, Aruba switches in addition to uh adding those values the user would have to add those values in deployment manager but because when you use these use these two systems together some simplicity plus aruba uh deployment manager will actually automatically configure those vlans and automatically populate some of those ips on the storage and federation networks and it just is designed to simplify the deployment and make sure that there's no issues uh and no corresponding debug so This is an exciting new feature. It's available from HPE and thank you very much.